quickly and just re-explain the concept of one rand carrying value. You see, an asset cannot have no value in the books. And the minimum amount that it can carry is one rand for the lifetime of the of the of the asset. I'm going to talk about lifetime as well because it's also a topic that you deal with in matric, although it hasn't really come up, but you have to understand the concept of lifetime in terms of bookkeeping and then that you can continue to use the asset. A friend of mine popped in the other day and they've got their car for 20 years. Now, you can't say that that car has no value. They don't owe anything on the car, but the car is running beautifully. And if they should sell it, they should, they will get some value out of it. So there is always value in an asset, but the holding value, the carrying value in your books is always um, to a minimum of one rand and you'll keep it in the books. I'm talking about a business now, keep it in the books until you sell it and you'll keep it in that uh, for, uh, for however many years at one rand. Okay, so I've got here, a vehicle was bought on the 1st of September 2019 for 300,000. Depreciation is written off at 30% on cost, and I'm going to say on, I forgot to put that on, 28 Feb, February each year. Okay, so we know that our financial year ends at the 28th of February. <clears throat> so in our first year, we are going to depreciate this asset on cost 30%. So in our first year, this is year one, we're going to depreciate because it's the cost price method at 30%, but because we did not have it for a whole year, we only had this asset for six of 12 months. We bought it in September 2019, and we're depreciating the asset for the first time in Feb 2020, so that's six months. So now we're going to times six over 12, and we get 45,000, okay? That is half of 90,000 because 30% 30 of 30,000 will be 90,000. So for our first year, we are depreciating and our depreciation is 45,000. Now, we can work out carrying value as well. Carrying value will be 300,000. So I'm just gonna put a running total year of carrying value because that's important. That is really what we're looking at. So 300,000 minus 45,000 is going to give us 255,000. How did I get carrying value? I said to you, cost price minus, and this now becomes my depreciation and my accumulated. Okay. Then in year two, I'm going to do the same. And I'm going to move a bit faster. Okay. For the sake of time. And now I'm going to get 90,000 as my depreciation for year two. So now I'm going to minus another 90,000 from the 255 and I've got a carrying value of 165. <clears throat> it's important to know that carrying value. Then in year, that's year two, sorry. In year three, I do the same cost price times 30%, and that gives me another 90,000, okay? And now I take away 90,000 from my 165, and now I have a 75,000 carrying value. That's after year three. <clears throat> I still have a carrying value. So I must still depreciate. Now I can do one of two things, like I did. I can do the calculation and then see, wait, my calculation is more than, it's more than my carrying value. So I cannot take another 90,000 off. So my depreciation for year four will be six, sorry, sorry, 74,999. And my carrying value will be one rand. So can you see, I, re I can't do this calculation because this calculation is going to end up being more than the 75. So I simply say 75 minus 1, that becomes my depreciation, okay? And my carrying value then becomes 1 rand. Can I get an indication from the schools whether that, that explanation was adequate enough and you now understand? We are now going to continue with 1.2. Right, that talks about the loss of stock. And then we're going to continue later on in activity two. We are going to continue with 2.2, um, which then talks about trading stock deficit. But I want to show you the new way of asking these concepts. Okay, so let's go 
and let's prepare our 1.2 and we're going to fold the information in here. Okay, that is what I'm just get my answer up. There we go. Take that out of the way there. Now, this one says calculate the loss. So we know that a fire, a fire happened and some fridges were destroyed in the fire. Okay, we don't know how many fridges were destroyed in the fire and we need to calculate the rand value of the, um, the fridges. That we must calculate the loss on fridges and that talks about a rand value here, not the number of fridges. So let's go and look for our information and the information is beautifully put separately. It says here, fridges, oh, let me also just explain one thing, learners, right? You can see that there are other adjustments before this one. This one is number D, okay? But I don't want you to work from the question paper to the answer sheet. You work from the answer sheet and you follow the answer sheet sequentially. So you're going to answer 1.1 and you're going to go and find the information for 1.1 on your question paper. It's the better way to work. Okay, otherwise you're working all over on your answer sheet and you don't get anything done. And that's where learners lose marks. So remember, I'm also giving you exam tips. So please take these exam tips. So now you work through 1.1 like we did. We finish the answer. Now we're going to go to 1.2. And now we're going to find the relevant information for 1.2. And we find it here, not by A, not B, not C, by D. Okay. Fridges are valued using the specific identification method. Learners, I've seen this now creep in into paper one. Remember, inventory is a paper two activity. Okay, so <clears throat> inventory is covered in paper two, but in paper one, they can also uh, examine aspects of inventory. And I've seen them whenever it comes to trading stock deficit or when it comes to stock loss, they are now incorporating the inventory valuation methods. So they value fridges according to specific identification. Now they say no entry. Okay, when they say no entry has been made, it means that it means that the numbers that you see here was not affected by the loss. So no entry has been made in respect of a fire that occurred in the storeroom. A number of fridges were destroyed. They don't tell you how many fridges. The insurance company will pay out 80%, it's also important to know that. And you are allowed to take highlighters into your exam. It has now come up that learners can do that. In the past, they couldn't. So please highlight, uh, circle, underline important information as you read. That is your question paper. You can write on that question paper the way you want to, okay? So please when you do this, at your thinking process, you're underlining, you're highlighting, you're circling important information. So what must I know here? I'm using, I'm using the specific identification. No entry has been made and 80% will be paid out. So I'm just interested in the 20%. The 20% is my loss. Okay. Now they say specific identification. It means that the ice cool is valued according to only ice cool information. Friso is only Friso's information. So if I look at ice cool, I had an opening stock of 200. I bought 1,400 um, units. Then I sold 1,300 units. My closing stock according to my books. Remember, this is my book value according to my books. My closing stock is this amount. Now, let's see how many closing stock I have. Okay, let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. So, I started out with 200. Okay. So, let me just bear with me here. Let me just get some of my papers sorted out. Got stuff all over the show here. Sorry. Let me just get my pages sorted out here. My apologies. 
Here we go. Some of my pages just got mixed up here now. There we go. Right. I had started out with 200, and you can do the sums along. I bought another 400. So how many items did I have available? 1,600. I sold 1,300. So technically, I should have had 300 left. Over, but here I see. So I should have had 300 left over, but here I see. But wait a minute, they're telling me that they did a stock count and now there's only 275 left over. So what happened to the difference? Okay, so 200 plus 1, 2, minus 1, 3 gives me 300 units according to my books. 300, but according to stock count, I see I've got 275, okay? So I say 300 minus 275, and I get 25 units that is lost or due to fire, okay? It's a stock loss. Now they want the value, the RAND value there. So... I now need to see, according to the specific identification, what is the cost price of the units? My cost price of each ice cool fridge is 3,500. So now I take 25 times 3,500, specific identification. Okay, I'm not using any other method, but specific identification, and my answer is not the answer that I want, 87,500. But 20%, don't forget the 20%, okay? That is the total value of my 25 fridges. The insurance company is going to pay out 80%, so I'm going to get RAND value back. That's not going to be a loss, so 20% is my loss. So my loss is 17,500, okay? So guess what? You are now going to do. Remember, I do, you do, and then we do. And we're still using the same. So now we're going to go to activity two. So please take out activity two. I'm going to leave that up for now so that you can still see that. I think some people might still be copying it over. Now we're going to work our trading stock deficit activity two. I showed you now. Specific identification says, what is the cost price? In other words, how many units of that item do I have left over? <clears throat> okay, how many units of that item is missing or lost or stolen? And I use the cost of that specific item. I don't use FIFO, I don't use weighted average. Okay. Now that there's no questions, let's move to activity two. Here we go. Can you see it's number E here? Although it's number 2.2 .2 on activity two, I'm going to be working according to my question, my, my, my answer sheet. I'm following my answer sheet and I'm finding the information on my question paper. So yeah, it says trading stock is valued at the weighted average method. So now I'm using a different method. Okay, you with me? Weighted average method. So now you have to change. It's now no longer specific identification. Now you must think formula. What is the formula for my weighted average? Okay, if I'm going to fast, please tell me if I'll be able to ask me questions, but at least you'll be able to interact with the content. The ledger account and records reflect 280 units should be on hand. That is my, according to my books. However, the physical stock count reflects 262 units on hand. Okay, now they give you the scenario. I'm going to ask you, you're going to do now, I just read the information. Firstly, work out. How many units are short or stolen or lost? And then 
work out the specific identification rand per unit and then work out how many or the rand value of your trading stock deficit. You have five minutes. You have five minutes. Eat fast and work fast. Let's check. One more minute. And let, first thing you need to know is that I must work out how many units are short. Now, there's different ways to work it out. This is just the quickest way for me. So I'm going to say there were 280 units according to my books. But when I counted my stock, there was only 262 units left over, which means there's a problem. There's some unit short and there's 18 units short, missing, stolen, whatever that is, okay? I can't account for 18 units. There could be many reasons why there's 18 units short. So I need to ascribe a value to that 18 units. And according to my calculations, I'm using, or according to my, my uh, question paper, I'm using the weighted average method, okay? So I'm going to apply a formula to work out what is the weighted average cost price? I bought these items at different prices throughout the year or throughout the month. Okay, three, six, four, one, four, one. So what is my weighted average? I look at available for sale. Okay, rand value available over number of units available. So it was given. You didn't have to add that up, the units, and you didn't have to add up the rand value. It was given to you. Okay. And it's given to you for convenience to be able to work the information out very, very quickly. So I'm going to take my RAND value of my units on hand, uh, sorry, available, sorry, available. And I'm going to divide it by the number of units that I had available. So let me just show you quickly. Let me just show you. Can you see to work out units available? It is opening stock plus purchases minus returns, okay? They didn't put the returns in brackets, but 200 plus 1840 gives you 2040 minus 40 gives you 2000. And then you take the RAND value of opening stock, RAND value of purchases minus my returns. So that's basically your formula, okay? It is, that is opening stock plus purchases and if you had carriage on purchases, you would put that RAND value there as well, minus returns. That is your formula. And 
your number of units at the bottom will be opening stock plus purchases minus returns. Okay, because carriage on purchases is not a physical item. So that's my physical items at the bottom there. That's my RAND value at the top there. So that is my formula for weighted average. Now I get the weighted average and my weighted average per unit is 4,050 Rand. That's my weighted average per unit. So now I'm going to take that and I'm going to times it by 18. So I'm going to say, sorry, I'm just working a bit untidy there. 4050 times 18, which is my unit short, and I'm going to get 72,000. Oopsie, sorry, my apologies. Oh, my word. 72,000. 900. Okay, please don't forget your formula. You have to go into your exam equipped with your formula. From the 1st of December, so it's seven months worth of rent, so Frey owes us 91,000 rand in rent. 13 times 7 is 91,000 rand. So we've already prepared the director's fees. So all I'm now going to do, can you see how important it is to prepare your uh, framework? I'm now going to add 91,000 Rand, oops, 91,000 Rand to my director's fees. And I will explain that to you now. Okay. Firstly, Frey did not get all his director's fees. So this amount here, in RAND that was given to the directors does not include the 91,000 that he owes us for rent. We took that already. We set it off, okay? But no entry was made. So I added to rent income and I added to director's fees. I, and can you see it's offset? That's a plus, that's a minus. So it actually comes to naught at the end of the day. So I said to you, I'm going to explain to you offset. So if I have director's fees there is an expense, rent income here is an income. I don't have anything in rent income, so I added 91,000 Rand to my rent, okay? That is now my rent income. Then directors were paid 1,279,000, but it did not include the 91,000. So what is my full director's fee expense? It is 1,370,000. So now, if all the directors received all their money and Frey didn't rent the premises, that is what I would have paid out to directors. But I set it off against the rent. He doesn't pay us the rent and we don't give him the director's fees. Okay, so that's a negative, that's a minus on mine. It's going to be it's going to end up being a minus because all my expenses are minuses. So that's a plus, that's a minus. So it ends up being naught. Thumbs up. Moving on. I asked Miss Oreo this morning if the toggling between the screens is fine, and she said it was okay. C. An entry of 28,800 was made for consumable stores returned to a creditor. Right? We returned. That was the entry that was made in the books. We returned consumables to a creditor. The credit note reflects 21,600, okay? The credit note is correct, and the credit note has not been recorded yet. Consumables on hand, so there's two parts here. There's an error, and there's consumable stores on hand. Let's deal with the error first. I minus 28,800 instead of minusing 21,600. So I minus too much. Okay? And my rule is, if I minus too much, then I must add back. Returns is a minus, so I took too much away, so I must add. I must do the opposite operation. So the first thing I'm going to do is work out the difference between that and that. Okay, so 28,800 minus 21,600, and that gives me 7,200. So I minus 7,200 too much, so I'm going to add it back. And I'm going to have to write there. Okay, so I'm going to add the 7,200 back. 
And then my second part is consumable stores on hand, I always minus the amount that's on hand. So I'm going to minus 18,000. So my calculation is, that is the amount in my pre-adjustment trial balance, plus the 72 that I, my error that I made, minus my consumable stores on hand. Okay, that's the error that I made there that I'm plussing back. Why am I plussing it back? Because I minus too much. If you plus too much, you minus. If you minus too much, you plus. So I get 8.05 there. Okay. Please don't forget to post questions on the chat. Please do not forget. We've done C. So as you complete, you tick off, you tick off A, B, C, done. Okay, so that you can also see that you're getting through some stuff. Three th 32,000, please schools let me know if I'm going too fast, eh, or if you're with me. 32,400 from the yes is there a question information that is needed okay so I'm going to be filling in information there make that a bit bigger and I'm now going to be working according to the according to the adjustments given but please don't forget Please don't forget. I'm just putting this back on. This is activity one, 1.1, 1.2, and it says here the relevant figures from 1.1 and 1.2 must also be entered into the financial statement. Okay, so it's got these amounts, which is already worked out. You are now going to copy over onto your income statement. Please don't forget that. Total depreciation, we're going to put in. We've already worked out depreciation. We don't have to work it out again. It's already there. We're going to put in our profit on sale of asset. We've already worked it out. And we've already worked out our loss due to fire. Okay. So the reason why they asked this year is in the past, they would ask these questions and expect learners to put it on the income statement. But because it's the, the, the calculations are so big, and learners lose marks because they, you guys don't put your calculations in brackets and therefore you lose marks. They've now decided to do it this way, which makes sense for me as well. So let's fill in profit on sale of asset. I already have. I'm going to put in the 4,000 there and I'm going to get a part mark because if I get it wrong in my calculation, but I copy the wrong amount over in the right place, I get a part mark. Okay. Now I'm going to go down and depreciation. There we go. I'm going to put in my depreciation amount. Remember, we copied this in. So can you see how easy it is now? Now you're just filling in the puzzle. It's already there. And that is why I said. Hey, Mandy, listen in. Okay. Oh, there we go. Thank you. So that is why I said to you yesterday, prepare your framework. Because now you went and you did your whole calculation in 1.1, but you forgot to put depreciation in here. Now when you are busy filling in your income statement, you now say, oh, I'm filling up depreciation. Okay, let me go and see. I said it was 721700. Okay, so now you're just filling in the information. Oh, they have got lost due to fire, so now you're going to put in the 17,500. And so then you already have three items on your income statement that you worked out previously. And because you prepared your framework, you go and find that information now. Okay, now we're moving on. Guys, I'm going to have to work a bit faster, but I don't want to work so fast that you are lost, okay? Because it's pointless me going fast and you don't understand. Please ask questions. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to my question paper. I've now done my framework. Let me go back to my question paper. 
Done that, A, I tick, it's done, right? I've done my depreciation, B, uh, that's also part of A, done, I've done my depreciation and my loss on sale of asset. I think I'm by the wrong question. Yes, I'm by number two, my apologies. I figured that one out quickly. Right, there we go. Done that, tick, I've filled in the necessary information. Now I'm gonna start with B. Now I'm gonna work down my question paper, okay? I have my framework. So in order not to get lost, so with the first question, I, let me just slow down quickly. With the first question, I worked 1.1 and then 1.2. Then 1.3, I completed my framework and that we did yesterday. Now I fold in my information from 1.1 and 1.2, done. 1.1 and 1.2 is done. Now I'm going to do 1.3 and I'm going to go back to my question paper and now I'm going to read according to my question paper so that I don't miss out anything. Okay, I'm not going to do the same and go and look for information on sales and look for information because that is going to make you, accounting, you have to work logically, you have to work sequentially. Okay, so now, Read, two directors earn director's fees. Frey has not been paid his full fees because of rent due by him. So Frey rents a premises from us. Okay, so this is the first time that I now see that there's rent income. I wouldn't have known this before because they said nothing about rent income earlier. So I now see there's rent income, so I'm going to take note of that, but I'm going to read on because now I'm highlighting and I'm circling, okay? So I'm going to highlight the word, okay, there is rent income. Rent due by him? Do you buy someone? Yes. Um, Layden Secondary says that they cannot see anything. You are currently still on the question paper and not I using it. Visualizer, no, right? Not on the visualizer, I'm now on the question paper and I just highlighted something on the question yes, paper. So, Layden, can you please confirm if you are seeing the screen now or are you referring to the document reader? So we'll wait in the chat, ma'am. Okay. Right. So it says Frey did not receive his full fees, so we didn't pay him his full fees because he owes us rent. Okay, and no entry has been made of the rent. So I made a, I make a mental note of that. Since December, Frey has rented out part of the company's prop, property for personal use. The rent is 13,000 or the rent of 13,000 will be offset against fees owed by him. I'm going to explain the term offset in a minute. Okay, so that you can understand that. But please note two things. He didn't get his full director's fee. He owes us rent and the rent is 13,000. So we need to work out the full director's fee and how much um, he owes us for the rent. It's actually, it's a lot of words, but it's actually not a very difficult calculation. Okay, so there's two things at play here. The first thing is rent income is owed by Frey. Okay, maybe I'm making a bit of a, a bigger thing about it. The rent, so they are putting rent income. Let's just go again. And you are also now toggling between your uh, answer sheet and your question paper. The monthly rent. So the rent is 13,000 rand per month. Must be offset against the fees. When did he owe us the rent from? December, the 1st of December. When does our financial year end? In June. Okay, so... Our financial year ends in June. He owes us 13,000 Rand per month for how many months? Count from December to June. And on the chat, tell me how many months worth of rent he owes us. Moving on. 32,400 from the estate of an insolvent debtor. When you read this, you know, you know it's bad debts, okay? was deposited into the bank account of the business. So we received 32,400. This represents 75% in the RAND, okay? So that amount there is 75%. 
and I'm going to teach you something. Okay, it's a simple formula that I use what I want over what I have. The balance of his account must be written off. The balance of 25 cents in the rand. Okay, so now I'm going to say my bad debts must go up. I've got more bad debts. Okay, by how much? How much must my bad debts go up? So now I'm running out of space to do my calculation. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to use a different color. Okay, I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to do that. Then I'm going to do my calculation. Okay, so I know that 32,400 Rand was received. And the 32,400 represents 75 cents in the Rand. So my formula is what I want over what I have. So I have the 75 percent or the 75 cents, okay, which is the same thing. What do I want? I want the 25 cents in the Rand because I don't have that. I don't have the 100 percent and I don't have the 25 percent. So I can work out the 25 percent and that comes to 10,800. That is the 25 cents in the Rand. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my bad debts more by 10,800. And that is my calculation. Are there any questions? And my answer here is 206,800. Okay, so that plus that gives me 206,800. My bad debts becomes more because I have more bad debts. Any questions? Okay, so the first thing you must do is you go to your advertising, okay? The total amount paid, the total amount, which includes the 26,000 and the 12 months. Remember, they paid everything in August. So I'm going to take my 123,200 and I'm going to minus my amount, the, the lump sum that I paid of 26,000. So I'm minusing 26,000, okay? And I get 97,200. And I'm gonna divide the 97,200 by 12 to get 8,100 castles flat. Okay, you mustn't add the, 20, um, the 26,000, you must subtract the 26,000 because it includes, the amount paid includes um, 26,000. So let me show you that calculation quickly. I'm going to do it in a different color. 123,200 minus the 26,000 because that's my once off payment, right? Now I want to work out what my monthly amount is because my monthly amount is prepaid. Divide that by 12 and I get 8,100. The two months that is prepaid, I now need to consider. Okay, how many months is prepaid? How many months is prepaid? Remember my year ends in June, so July, August. So two months is prepaid. I count from the end of June, and I know that the campaign ends in July. So July is prepaid and August is prepaid. Okay, so I'm going to times that by two, and my prepaid expense is 16,200 prepaid expense. Okay, so I'm not sure how you got 8,800 Castle or maybe you just typed it in incorrectly. Okay, so it's 16,200. That is my prepaid expense. Please don't Excuse forget. Excuse me, Ms. Mandy. Yes. Just a reminder to all schools, we noted that only one school, Excelsior, completed the attendance register, all the other schools in the session. Just a friendly reminder to please complete the attendance register as it is required by your subject advisor and head office. Thank you very much, colleagues. Thank you, Ms. Mandy. It's a pleasure, ma'am. No problem. Please feel free to disturb me at any time. I know I go on and I ramble, ramble. Okay, so let's see now. 
how does this affect my calculation? Rule for prepaid expense, okay? I always minus prepaid expense from my expense, so minus 16,200. And I'm going to give you the rule for accrued as well. So that gives me 107,000. That is my actual expense for advertising for the financial year from September to June. Okay. So my rule is as follows. When it comes to prepaid expenses, I'm going to write it down. Always add accrues always add your accrues okay what are you adding it to okay i'm going to take my income in my pre-adjustment trial balance and i'm going to plus my accrued i'm going to take my expense in my pre-adjustment trial balance and i'm going to plus my accrued and then it's always minus or subtract prepaid expense and income received in advance. So if you have an income in your pre-adjustment trial balance, I'm going to minus my prepaid expense. If I have an expense, I mean, if I have an income, I'm going to minus my income received in advance. And if I have an expense, I'm going to minus my prepaid expense. What do I mean by that? The calculation that I just calculated for my accrued. Okay, I'm going to plus, and the calculation that I just calculated for my prepaid expense, I'm going to minus. Like in the case of my advertising, I minus my prepaid portion. Okay, that is the rule, and you please apply that rule. I did say to you that I'm going to give you rules and tips throughout. And we are nearly done. You can see I'm not going to do that part. Okay, we're going to do the next activity, but I'm just going to finish off with this one here. And we do, we're doing good for time. We're finishing at 10 o'clock. Provide for interest on the mortgage loan. The statement received from Silver Bank indicates monthly payments of 48500 This includes interest capitalized. Now, what I'm going to show you learners applies to my calculation for interest in my cash flow, okay? And it also applies to my repayment in my balance sheet. So, the formula I'm going to show you now is important and the my objective for these lessons is to show you quick ways to calculate certain things. So, like I showed you with um, assets, you know, when you had the whole opening balance plus minus minus, um, I'm going to show you the same for loans. This is what the framework that you use, okay? I take my opening balance for my loan, okay? Then to that, I'm going to minus my repayments and I'm going to plus my interest and that is going to equal my closing balance. So now, three of this information must be given, okay? In this case, I need to work out my interest. My interest is my unknown for my income statement. For your cash flow, the interest can also be your un unknown or the repayments, the repayment of the loan. For your balance sheet, the repayment of the loan can be your unknown. So this formula you use to calculate repayment of loan, this is only when interest is capitalized, eh? only when an interest is capitalized. Or you can work out the interest. It's the same formula whether you're doing balance sheet, whether you're doing cash flow, whether you're doing income statement. So now let's go and find our information. We know that there's monthly payments which includes the interest, okay? The statement received from Silver Bank indicates monthly payments of that. This includes the interest capitalized. So I'm going to calculate, okay, what my monthly payments are. Let me just find that calculation. So 
sorry. There we go. I'm going to do my calculation for my monthly payments here. And I paid 48,500 per month times 12 month, which wrong place, sorry, which includes interest. And that is going to give me a total of 582,000 in repayments. Okay, repayments will decrease the loan. I don't know what my interest is. Sorry, that calculation must be on top there. Okay, I do have an opening balance of 2,300,000 and I'll show you where I got that from. And I have a closing balance of 1,984,000. Okay, so let me show you where these amounts come from. That's my opening balance. That's my closing balance. There we go. There I have oh, loan, opening balance that was last year, and closing balance that was this year. Okay, so that's my opening balance. That's my closing balance. That's where I got my information from. And I got my repayments there i times it by 12 because they say it's monthly payments which includes the interest right so now i'm going to say opening balance minus repayments minus closing balance and that's going to give me interest of 266000 on my statement it's going to increase my loan but on my income statement it's going to be an expense, so there are 14 brackets. So let me show you what the loan account looks like. It has an opening balance of 2,300,000. This is the same way, same information, just doing it in a different way. There's my repayments of 582,000, which is the 48,500 times 12. And there's my closing balance, that's my opening balance, brought down closing balance carry down of 1,984,000. So that minus minus is going to give me my interest of 266. And that amount I'm going to put into my income statement. Okay. Let me just get out my income statement here. Kind of misplaced my income statement. There we go. So I already put my brackets 266. Sorry, I forgot to put in the director's fee, 1,370,000. Okay. There's just one more adjustment that I seem to have left off. Just to show you, please check that you have all your expenses. I'm going to show that calculation here. Sorry, 2,300,000. I just showed it uh, to you. This is actually how you do it on your calculation, on your ca uh, income statement. Okay, and then you can do a small bracket there. Four, eight, 500 times 12. So just check that you've got everything in. If you want to be clever, take a photo of this. Okay, you can go and practice at home. Everyone is very quiet today. You can see that our income statement is quite bare still. Okay, we still have to finish it. But I want you to practice some calculations before we do that. But I just want to do this on top here, the sales. I left that for last purposefully, okay? Because it is quite a, uh, a difficult calculation, but learners, I have seen this over and over in exams, okay? That the way that sales is questioned and I left that one out. Directors B. Why did I leave that one out? Sorry, just trying to find that calculation. There we go, there we go, there we go, there we go, there we go. There we go. Cost of sales. 
I, am I missing something here, B, A? I think I'm missing something. I'm trying to figure out where's my cost of sales calculation. Oh, I'm smiling to myself because I've got the calculation, but I, for the life of me, can't find it. A, B, C, D, E. Someone can tell me where it is. E, F, G, A. Oh, no, that's income tax. J. All right. Okay. Let's also check. From David Bingham, yes. Saying. What are they saying? E, A, B, C, D. Oh, yes, there it is. Ah, yeah, yeah, because it was part of D and I missed it. Thank you so much. I can't believe that I would have missed it. I saw it as part of D. The business uses a markup of 60% on the cost price. Okay, 60%. Please remember that. Now they throw in a bit of a curveball. Because had it been that simple, then all we would have done to work out cost of sales is use our formula. But it's not so simple. Okay, so what they say here is trade discounts, okay, given to customers. We're not receiving the trade discount. We are giving the uh, trade discount to our customers have been granted on the sale of the Frizo fridges. Okay, so when a debtor came to buy from us, we gave them a trade discount. And the trade discount totaled 270,000. Now, that trade discount has been taken off this amount. In other words, the sales is 275,000 less because we gave trade discounts. So how am I gonna work out my cost of sales? Because I didn't receive the trade discount, I gave it. I take my sales, And I plus back my trade discount. Because I'm saying, if I had not given the trade discount, what would my sales have been? Now, I times that amount by 100 over 160. Because I gave them a 60% markup, or I made a 60% markup on my cost. So what I want is my 100% cost, and what I have is my 160 selling price, okay? But if I did not give the discounts, then my sales would have been more by 275. So now I say that plus that times 100 over 160, and that gives me my cost of sales of 8,262,500. Okay. Right, now I'm gonna ask you to do a few calculations for me. The first thing, I'm not gonna finish the income statement with you, you're gonna finish this at home, but I'm gonna give you the answer so that you know what the answer is. And there we go, that is the answer. Okay, please complete this at home. There's no adjustments to my interest income, so that remains. That remains, there's no adjustment. So if that happens and you prepared your framework and there was no adjustment, you simply copy that amount over. Don't forget to do that. Okay, but I need to do a few adjustments with you so that I can see that you know how to do the adjustment. So there we go, that's your answer. Please put that in next to interest income. Okay. And then, please don't forget, you, here you add your trade uh, discounts back because you minused it. To get that answer, I had sales and I minused my 275 to get that answer. So now I add it back so that I can work out. Because remember, I had to buy the items that I gave a trade discount on. So now what did those items cost me? So I have to add it back. So what you're gonna do now is activity two. And activity two starts with B. Okay, I want you to do B with me. That one, I just explained the trade discount now. So we activity two now, and we don't have a lot of time. We have 20 minutes left.
I'm just going to pick out a few adjustments that you can do and practice. So what does B look like? The business maintains a profit markup of 120 on cost. Note that trade discounts of 648 were granted to special customers. So we gave trade discounts again. OK. However, in this case, they give you, it's a different way of working it out, but I want you to figure it out. They give you cost of sales. OK, so by number two, they give you cost of sales. By number one, they gave you sales. Now they give you cost of sales and they say the business maintains a profit markup of 120 percent and they gave trade discounts. How are you going to work out that amount? You've got one minute. And if someone can put the answer in the chat. because it's a bit different now, that is the full cost of sales. That is the cost of the sales. But on the sales, I gave a trade discount. Okay, so I can't work it out. I can't add it back here. So what I do is I take my 6966, and now I work out my sales first. Okay, I work out my sales first. I say times 220, which is selling price, percentage over 100 because that is 100%. So what I have is the 100%. What I want is the 220%, which is 120 plus 100, okay, because I marked it up from 100 by 120. So my full answer here is actually 220%. Then I get my answer. Then to that answer, I'm going to, sorry, not plus back, I'm going to minus, because now it's the discount I gave, okay, the 648. And that's how the difference is. Here I first add back and then work out cost of sales. Here I first work out sales and then minus. And learners, that is a new way of asking this question here. I've seen it in other exams before. Okay, I've seen that in other exams before. Oops, are there any questions with regards to that? Let me write the answer in. 14,677,200. Are there any questions? That is also a new way of asking to work out sales and cost of sales. There's just one last concept that I want to show you before I finish, and I won't be able to finish this income statement here. I'm hoping that the answers will be sent to your teacher so that you can work through these adjustments because these adjustments are also quite important. I only have 15 minutes left, and I want to go through the retained income note and the ordinary share capital note. I don't know if any of the learners that I tutored on a Saturday or sitting in the class, I know I had some learners from Castles Flay there, and um, I, I actually said to them that I'm going to put money on the fact that those either one of the two notes are going to come in, okay? And I always tell my learners in class as well that 
Don't go into the exam without having prepared or without knowing how to do the retained income note and how to do the ordinary capital note. Because there's an important concept that they will test or will examine. And I'm going to talk about that now. Okay, so there we go. There I showed you that important concept. See how you actually get to that answer. Okay, you times it by 220. What you want is higher than the 100. That, remember, is always 100%. Your cost of sales is always 100%. And then your sales is your markup plus 100. Okay, so your that amount must actually be more than your cost of sales. Right, so now my last stretch is to go over the only share capital note and the retained income note with you. And now we're going to go all the way to question three. We haven't touched on question three, but question three has both the ordinary share capital note and retained income note. And I only have 15 minutes for that. And I'm going to have to give you the net profit amount, the net profit after tax amount. So there's the information we are going to be using for those two notes. And I have 15 minutes. So Here's the thing. Let me rather show it to you and then you can go and um, watch the, the recording again. OK, but I'm going to have to go through this quite quickly without wanting to rush. So I'm going to do the ordinary share capital note first. It's the last page of your answer book and it's also the last page of your question paper. Quest, um, activity three. And then you can practice the retained income note um, in question one. OK, but there's an important skill that I must show you. So there's my information. I'm going to cheat a bit because I didn't do the income statements. So I'm going to give you the net profit. Um, I'm going to give you the net profit after tax. I'm going to fill that in for you. OK. Just so that we can get through the work, but that's only when we get to the retained income note. Right. So here we go. Let's just read quickly because I'm not going to come back to the screen. Share capital. This is for the ordinary share capital note. March, 60% of my shares were in issue. They've given that amount. May, 60,000 shares were repurchased at 840. And then October, 40,000 additional shares were issued and they don't give you the amount. Right. Just to let you know, I'm also going to be referring to that amount, which is on the 28th of Feb. So this amount here is my closing balance, okay? Because it's given and they're not saying no entries were made. So the assumption is that these entries were made, okay? So let's go. There they've given me the opening balance. So there I have that is six, that there is 60% of that. And I've got 8,400,000 as an opening balance. And I had, at the time, I had 1,200,000 shares. I repurchased 60,000 shares. Okay, I repurchased 60,000 shares. At, and I'm going to pause there. I repurchased 60,000 shares at. One thing you must know about this note is that that at is your average price. That's your average share price there. Okay? How do I work out my average share price? I take my 8,400,000 and I divided by 1,200,000. So my RAND value of my shares divided by my number of shares before the repurchase. Okay, that will give me my average. If I issued first and then repurchased, then I will add my issue amount to that. I will add my issue amount to that, and then I will average it out. But in this case, I first repurchased, and then I issued. Okay, so I use the amount 
just before the repurchase. In this case, it gives me an average price of seven rand per share. So my act amount here is seven rand because it's my average price. And then I take 60,000 times seven rand and that's gonna give me 420,000. That is skill number one, okay? Working out the average price. If there's any questions, Ms. Oriel, please, uh, you can interject in the middle, but I'm going to continue because I, I need to get done with this. No, and I don't you want to continue, ma'am. Sorry? You may continue, ma'am. Thank you. No then I issued 140,000 shares. And they don't tell me what I issued it at. Okay. So I don't know, but remember the closing balance that I referred you to? They must always give you enough information to be able to work it out. Okay, so don't get stuck. If they don't give you the closing balance, then they must give you the issue price. But in this case, they did not give you the issue price, so they gave you the closing balance. If they give you the issue price, you simply say 140 times the issue price, but they didn't give it to you. Okay, and I have, I started out with 1,200,000, I repurchased 60,000 and I issued 140. So now I have 1,280. Oh. I'm just finishing it off. Okay, and that is my closing balance. So how do I work out my issue price? I simply say opening balance minus repurchase, minus closing balance. And that gives me 1,400,000. So I can see that I issued it at 10 Rand. Okay, but you don't have to write it in. And there you have seven marks. All you need to know is that is the amount I use, the average price. Okay. Now let's go to retained income. Can you see it's blank? Guys, you have to study your format. But I know my format, so I'm going to write in, and please write in fast, net profit after tax. This is after tax, and I'm going to have to give you this amount because it's not given. Okay. It's not given. So you, you can only do this note after you've done your income statement. Let me just show you quickly. We don't have a retained income opening balance. They've not given it to us, okay? So don't stress because they've given you the closing balance. So enough information must be given to you. So that is obviously going to be the balancing figure. You're going to work upwards. The net profit after tax, we will calculate in the income statement and you'll copy that over from your income statement. That's your last line item in your income statement. That's the very last item on your income statement. Okay, the net profit after tax. Now, here comes my memorization. I need to know that I first put in a repurchase of shares And then it's ordinary share dividends. You're filling in a puzzle, okay? What does my ordinary share dividends consist of? Interim and final, okay? We've got six minutes left and we um, I'm so excited because we'll be able to finish it. Let's copy that down very quickly because I don't want to talk while you're busy copying down. So I'll wait for about 20 seconds. You must write fast, eh? Please know that you can use a pencil in your final exam. Please ensure that it's a sharpened pencil and that it's a dark enough pencil that does not smudge. Your teachers are not going to be marking your exams, so be aware of your handwriting. Right. 
So repurchase of shares. I know I repurchased 60,000 shares. And my rule here is that the RAND value here must be the above average. OK, so how do I work out the above average? Where do I get the above average from? They say. was repurchased at 840. That is my repurchase price. Okay. My repurchase price of 840 goes into my cash flow statement that we did on Tuesday. That goes into the cash flow statement. So can you see how this is so important? They will test the, the aspect of repurchase of shares either in the ordinary share capital account or the retained income account or the cash flow. So this concept concept will be examined. Then I'm going to split the two. Seven Rand went into my ordinary share capital note, and the remainder of one Rand 40 will go into my retained income note. And that is how I split the two. So that is times 1.40, my above average amount, and the amount in brackets there is 84. Thousand. Okay. Amper down. Amper down. Remember, I said to you that, and th this activity is being very generous because here they say interim dividend. And remember, I said to you that last item on your um, on your pre-adjustment trial balance, that dividend there. That is your interim dividend, so it's always given. So there, my interim dividend was given to 28, and that is in my pre-adjustment trial balance, and that's the only amount that does not go into my income statement. It goes here. So this is where you put the interim dividend from your pre-adjustment trial balance. And then finally, okay, you can hear I'm very excited because I've got to finish this with you. So that comes from your pre-adjustment trial balance, that last item. That is where you put it, not in your income statement. I cannot emphasize that enough. And then finally, it says, um, the directors declared a final dividend of 22 cents per share. Now remember, the final dividend is at the very end of the year in February. And if you sold these shares here, okay, in May, and you issued extra shares in October, then the amount or the, the amount of shares that you use for your final dividend is your closing balance. Because at the end of the year, I had 1,280,000 rands worth of shares. So that is the amount you use for your, in this activity, this is the amount that you use for your calculation. Sometimes you repurchase shares at the end of the year and then they say these shareholders still qualify for a dividend. Please take note of that. OK, or if you issue shares right at the end of the year, they might say these shares do not qualify. So please take note of that. I have got two minutes, so I'm going to say one million two hundred and eighty thousand. And I'm going to times that by point two two. Please note it's not twenty two. It's point two two. OK, and that's going to give me two eighty one six hundred. I'm going to add this together and I'm going to put the total there. And it, it's in brackets, and it's 509600. Now, all that remains is I'm going to, where I minus, I'm going to plus because I'm working backwards now. I'm working up. Okay. So when I work up, I do the opposite of what happens if I work down. So I say 423 plus 509600 plus 84 minus 700,800, and I get 315,800, and that is your balancing figure. Okay, and that is it. That, these two notes, you have to go 
into the exam with the knowledge of these two notes. Learners, it is 10 o'clock. It is time for your break. I cannot go over time. I really, really enjoyed this time with you. I wish you all the luck for your exams. And I wish I could say a prayer over you, but I will be praying for everyone on that mornings when you write accounting. Thank you so much. Thank you. Enough time to copy down and write in. I don't want to go too fast. Remember, I can't see you in the class. And we're nearly done. You can see we're nearly done. Okay. So can you see how quickly it takes when you already have your framework done? It's not that long. Now, we are going to go a bit slowly, okay? Because this one is a, um, a question that you must read into. Here again, you highlight, you underline. And it's G. We are busy with G now. Protea TV has been contracted to produce an advertisement and to broadcast it at a fixed monthly rate for a period of September to August. Okay, so you can already see there's overlap because our year ends in June 2020. So what comes to mind? What comes to mind when you read this transaction? Can someone put it in the chat, please? Yes. When you read certain information, you must already, when you're reading, your brain is working and saying, oh, okay, my year ends in June. They're talking about August, so it must be prepaid expense. The amount paid to Protea includes a once-off payment of 26000 paid in August 2019 for producing the video. The balance covers the 12 monthly fee. Okay, remember they talk about a monthly fixed monthly fee year. So the balance after the 26 talks about a 12 monthly fee. Firstly, work out how much or what the monthly fee is. Okay, I want you to work out. I'm not going to work it out for you. I want you, I'm going to give you two minutes. Or a minute. Let me give you a minute. Work out what the monthly fee is from September to August, which is 12 months. Okay, knowing that a once-off amount was paid. So don't work out the prepaid expense, just work out the monthly fee for me, please. 